and Enoch, the seventh from Adam, also prophesied. Science and Mystery in Enoch Shortly after I became saved, I decided that I would read the Bible from cover to cover. One day I was reading in Deuteronomy, and I became curious about God's dietary laws. Why were some foods considered clean and others considered unclean? Later that day I happened to be in a bookstore, and a certain book caught my eye. It was called The Lost Books of the Bible. Curious, I picked it up and opened it, and I immediately saw the word Deuteronomy. As I scanned the verses surrounding it, I realized that I had opened it right to the answer to this very question. This sort of experience was not new to me, because God had answered many of my questions this way in the past, and I had come to believe that this was one of the ways that God speaks to us. But this time was different. This wasn't the Bible, but a book that was rejected by early church theologians. I wasn't sure if this was a sign or just a coincidence, but I felt I had to buy the book anyway. I grew to really like what these books had to say, but I still had to wrestle with my conscience, because I wasn't too sure if these books were inspired or just brilliant fictions. I finally grew to love them so much that I just didn't care anymore. I had come to learn so much from them that I just began to accept their inspiration. The years passed, and then it happened. I was reading the book of Enoch, and all of a sudden I realized that what I was reading could not be fiction. I was absolutely sure that what I was reading could not have been the ramblings of an overzealous pseudo-prophet. What I read, I read over and over again. The more I read it, the more certain I became about my conclusion. What I was reading was a perfect description of a black hole. This account is taken from 1st Enoch chapter 1. And I came to an empty place, and I saw there neither a heaven above nor an earth below, but a chaotic and terrible place. And there I saw seven stars of heaven bound together in it, like great mountains, and burning with fire. At that moment I said, for which sin are they bound, and for what reason were they cast in here? Then one of the holy angels, Uriel, who was with me, guiding me, spoke to me and said to me, Enoch, for what reason are you asking, and for what reason do you question and exhibit eagerness? These are among the stars of heaven which have transgressed the commandments of the Lord, and are bound in this place until the completion of ten million years, according to the number of their sins. I then proceeded from that area to another place, which is even more terrible, and I saw a terrible thing, a great fire that was burning and flaming. The place had a cleavage that extended to the last sea, pouring out great pillars of fire. Neither its extent nor its magnitude could I see, nor was I able to estimate. At that moment I said, What a terrible opening is this place, and a pain to look at. Then Uriel, one of the holy angels who was with me, responded and said to me, Enoch, why are you afraid like this? I answered and said, I am frightened because of this terrible place and the spectacle of this painful thing. And he said unto me, This place is the prison house of the angels. They are detained here forever. A black hole is the final stage of a star's life, if the star had a mass of at least three of our suns. Some black holes are much larger, having a mass of millions or even billions of suns. There isn't any limit to how massive they can become, especially if they are well fed by stars near the center of a galaxy. A supermassive black hole, such as are believed to lurk at the centers of radio galaxies, tend to spew out huge pillars of radiation, some as far as 6,000 light years or even more. Our entire galaxy is only about 100,000 light years across, so the two ascending and descending pillars of radiation could add up to a total of 12,000 light years across. A supermassive black hole would be surrounded by stellar and interstellar material, such as dust and other stars. One example of a black hole having captured a star is Cygnus X1. The star seems to be orbiting absolutely nothing at all, but is in fact losing much of its mass in its fatal attraction. A black hole has at its center what is called a singularity, which has an incredible mass and an infinite gravitational pull, but is infinitely small. So great is its pull that the space around it is bent to infinity and even light cannot escape. 
Everything that passes a certain point, called the event horizon, is doomed. It is the threshold beyond which there is absolutely no possibility that anything could escape. It is a one-way street. The material that surrounds it forms a white-hot spiraling feature called an accretion disk. In some cases, this accretion disk can outshine its entire galaxy a hundredfold. It is paradoxical, but even though no light can escape from a black hole, its accretion disk can be extremely bright. Now that we have the black hole basics down, we can interpret Enoch's vision. The empty place, which is chaotic and does not have a heaven above or an earth below, is outer space. Space is almost completely empty, and it can be called chaotic because there are constantly at work cycles of stellar and planetary birth and death. There is, moreover, no up or down in space. All directions are relative to one another. The great fire that was burning and flaming corresponds to the accretion disk that surrounds and feeds it. The cleavage is the bending of the space-time to infinity. If one imagines space-time as a rubber sheet, this bending of time and space would resemble the kind of funnel that would be the result of a long stick pushing down the center of it. The bending is so extreme and the force is so vast that science doesn't even have the physics to describe it. All laws of physics and quantum mechanics break down, and as yet, unknown laws of quantum gravity take over. Time and space literally go out of existence in the singularity. It is an ending point, an infinitesimal boundary to the universe. The last C is the singularity. Under the new physics of quantum gravity, this singularity is somehow a seething mass of something called quantum foam. It is chaotic and not well understood as of yet but one can see that it would correspond nicely with the word sea, since the sea is both fluid and somewhat chaotic. The great pillars of fire would correspond to the immense radiation jets that spew out from it in both directions, perpendicular to the accretion disk. The fact that Enoch goes on to state that he could neither estimate its extent nor its magnitude lets us know that the forces at work in it are infinite and impossible to describe or even conceive of. Another account of this black hole is given in chapter 18, verses 10 through 16. A place beyond the great earth, where the heavens come together. And I saw a deep pit with heavenly fire on its pillars. And I saw inside them descending pillars of fire that were immeasurable in respect to both altitude and depth. And on top of that pit I saw a place without the heavenly firmament above it, or earthly foundation under it, or water. There was nothing on it, not even birds, but it was a desolate and terrible place. And I saw there the seven stars, which were like great burning mountains. Then the angel said to me, This place is the ultimate end of heaven and earth. It is the prison house for the stars and the powers of heaven, and the stars which roll over upon the fire. They are the ones which have transgressed the commandments of God from the beginning of their rising, because they did not arrive punctually. And he was wroth with them, and bound them until the time of the completion of their sin in the year of mystery. The fact that this place is beyond the great earth firmly establishes its location in outer space. When it says that it is the place where the heavens come together, this indicates that it is a boundary to the fabric of space and time. The deep pit is the infinite bending of time and space that occurs beyond the event horizon. Again, the pillars are the radiation jets that pour out of it. The fact that stars, a code word for the fallen angels, are in orbit around it correctly indicates that stars can be and often are captured by black holes. The image of the stars rolling correctly reflects the fact that stars rotate as they orbit it.